the anti-racism protest across North America inspired our book reviewer Wayne Button this week to look up a book written in 1959. The book is called Black Like Me, written by an American journalist named John Howard Griffin. Wayne's here to tell us more. Good morning. Good morning, Janice. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. Is this book nonfiction? What is the story behind it? It's a very amazing, uh, true social experiment almost. Uh, so John Howard Griffin is a journalist and he wanted to expose the deep south for the racism that, that it is. He's a white man from Texas and his magazine that he was writing for agreed. So what they did was he actually went to a dermatologist. He took pills for several days to help change the pigmentation of the skin and he spent sometimes up to 15 hours a day under an ultraviolet light and eventually with time he was actually to change the pigmentation of the skin uh, to appear as an African-American man. And what he did was he actually went and traveled six weeks uh, through Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, a number of different states. And he took notes and wrote a journal, which is in this book, about his social experiment of what it's like to be uh, African-American in the Deep South in the 60s. So what kind of experiences did he have, Wayne? You know, some of the things that really st stood out to me in the book, it's not racism in the way that you would think. So he wasn't like arrested. He wasn't like, you know, no one used the M word or anything like that. Um, but just little subtle things that was different for him. Uh, back then, the biggest thing was, which is very annoying in the book, he mentions all the time about how hard it is to find a washroom that he can use. Every time he's downtown area, um, he has to sometimes walk 40 minutes out of the way just to use a washroom because they're segregated. And uh, it's very well known in the African-American community. Like, oh, if you're going to that part of town, uh, there's not many washrooms there, so be careful. So that was very, you know, that's different today, but that was very interesting to uh, read. He also does a lot of hitchhiking. Uh, and what was very odd was he, he was picked up by a lot of, you know, white people as he was hitchhiking, but they would almost partake in weird conversations with him, uh, conversations that I guess the way he words it is, you know, that they wouldn't have with their local, you know, white other friends that they could kind of talk with him. Almost like, I guess I'd use the word locker room talk. Um, so very odd conversations like that. And just subtle things like the way people talk to him and look at him and, and a lot of states, like when he was in Alabama, he would actually refrain from going out at night because he heard a lot of bad things that would happen at night to African-American people. So just some subtle racism, things like that, that he actually exposed in the book. Now, the book was written in 1959. Do you think it's still current today? I mean, one of the big things that stood out to me that he mentions, which is probably evolved today, is a lot of like i don't explain it not a lot of equality in the metropolitan areas at that time compared to the rural areas so in the metropolitan areas you know african americans didn't have access to libraries didn't have access to different schools and stuff like that so they were actually segregated in a way where they were kept down to not be as educated as, the, as a white person in the rural areas there were no libraries there were no like sometimes there was only one school and everybody went to it so the equality was a lot different in the rural areas but the internet today and the television probably changed that a little bit where people in more isolated areas uh, don't have to go to a library or don't have to go to a museum they can access knowledge online they can access knowledge to tv so that probably really i assume uh, helped change the racial equality area, uh, issues in rural areas as well William, what kind of reaction did this book get from readers back in the 50s and 60s? You know, that's the interesting thing that really shocked me with the book, because when he was done, he, um, he received, you know, some hate from people. He received over 6,000 letters, and only nine of them were abusive in nature. What he said was most of the letters he got was actually from white people in those states, and they were writing him because they were very happy that he did what he did and he exposed the racism in their states. The way that he, he words it is basically a lot of the white people were more uncomfortable with their racist friends than they were with the actual racism in their state. So they were really happy uh, that he 
that he exposed this. Now, on the flip side, a couple years after, he was attacked uh, on the side of the road by by a group of white men. Uh, he was actually put in the hospital. So there was obviously some hate and some appreciation for it. It got a lot of attention in pop culture. Now, this book was also turned into a movie, wasn't it? Correct, yeah. I've never seen it, but a couple years later, it was turned into a movie, yes. And I believe uh, from the notes in front of me, the DVD was released in December 11th of 2012 in North America from Video Services Corp. And it also includes a documentary titled On Common Vision about uh, John Howard Griffin, who was the journalist, uh, which is the main character that the movie is based on. So sure, uh, that sounds like a pretty interesting one to check out, I'm, I'm sure. I also want to pass along this morning that, uh, Wayne, we do have some more book suggestions. CBC Books has a few suggestions out today. 25 books about being black in Canada, and you can check the titles out at cbc.ca slash books. Now, we're